See. The little wheels are spinning here. There oh, is. there we go. Nice. Woo. Hey, oh, he's in the house. Yeah. He's live. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, let me, Ken, bear with, bear with me while I finish talking to Jim about, uh, we were just talking about our award-winning films. Congratulations. Award-winning <laughs> award film careers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And, That's uh, awesome, yeah. yeah. Jim was just telling me a way a way that I can improve my uh, filmmaking. The the advice that I liked was sit down and analyze some Looney Tunes. Yes, that's what I did. When, yes, che I told him check out like a Bugs Bunny cartoon, mm -hmm. and then kind of like look how long they hold on each shot. You know, like right. okay, I, and I did this years ago, and I was like, okay, like the average was like six seconds they would hold on a shot. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes there's exceptions where there's a long you know, drawn out period. But right. if you do that, you'll get the idea of the pacing because our cartoons are roughly as long as a Looney Tunes cartoon, you know, six, seven minutes usually. Yeah. yeah. So that's a good way. And TV shows too. You do that with TV shows. Yeah. That's, that's definitely a, um, something good to study when you're working on film or animation is, you know, how, because you can use the tension or use it for comedy or things like that. Pacing is important. Even in comics, um, it's a big thing that uh, people talk about in comics is pacing of the story. Yeah. And, you know, when you're, especially when, I, when I'm read, I don't have a lot of time, so I kind of like speed read through a lot of things, and that kind of ruins the pacing for me. Yeah. But, you know, it, it's, it's really important. When it's well done, you're like, wow, that's, you know, it creates the impact and the buildup. So definitely agree with that. The only thing I told Paul, don't look at Sinead O'Connor videos because they're all like one shot, one slow. <laughs> so. But, I mean, that could be a style on its own. So if you want to go that direction, that's <laughs> right. My next flick, my next flick is going to be one shot. You know, it's yeah. Be, you know, I half kiddingly said that, but I, when there's a couple of my cartoons or mid early on that I did that I thought, well, Stanley Kubrick stays on one shot for a really long time. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to stay on one shot for a really long time. <laughs> and I did, and I realized, okay, he can get away with it because he has a team of people lighting things and moving, you know what I mean? Uh, like they're right. detailed, and, and you can stare at that. It's like a photograph. You can say, and oh, I realized yeah. the other thing, too, is that even though there's no movement, there might not be anybody moving in there. On film, you can tell it's not yeah. still. You know, Plus, yes. when you're working with actors, you know, you have that little facial expression changes or anything like that. It makes a huge difference. In animation, yeah. it's that's a different way of doing it, more more difficult in doing it. Unless yeah. you're, I don't know if you're familiar with a lot of the Dragon Ball Z um, <laughs> cartoons. You know, it's like, if you think about it, uh, a 20-page uh, Dragon Ball Z comic or a manga, they have to turn it into a half an hour episode. So. Right. There is a lot of lag time. If you watch an episode of Dragon Ball Z, especially the earlier ones, there are battle scenes where all they do is they talk for, you know, 20 minutes and then they fight for three minutes. <laughs> and then it's another delay. And the, the technique is almost like they talk about what they're going to do to the other guy. And then the other guy talks about, you cannot do this to me because I'm better than you are. And then, they, you know, it's like a verbal battle. It's like it's, professional wrestling. Oh, yeah. It's a verbal battle for, you know, 20 minutes and you're anticipating, okay, what's going to happen? And then they fight for two minutes. You're like, that was it. Next episode, you got to wait another week. You know? That's like what Paul does when he goes out to a bar. He talks for a few minutes and then it's fighting time. <laughs> so there, you know, like that's maybe if you want to go that route, that's another way. But, well, this was back in the Philippines. We would wait for weeks for the, you know, for a battle to finish. And then the TV station would restart the show back to the beginning, the first episode. And you're like, what just happened? <laughs> Another question. Yeah. Why, oh, why and how are there so many incredible comic book artists out of the Philippines? Like, how, like, where did that come from? That's amazing. There's so many good Filipino artists. And then people, um, I have a friend that, um, that contracted a, uh, uh, an artist out of the Philippines mm -hmm. to do his, he did a book on uh, Caravaggio, the, the artist, uh -huh. Ken Mora, uh, who hopefully will oh, be on your show one day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it, but there's so many amazing artists out of the Philippines, it's really cool. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of talent um, over there. Even 
when I was a kid, my my skills is nothing compared to some of the artists over there. And actually, a lot of um, I think DC or even Marvel artists were like from the Philippines, like the earlier ones. If you yeah, like, like, yeah. What's Tony? Uh, Tony uh, Zunga, something like that. I think he just I passed. Remember, yeah. There's quite a few of them that are, you know, if, I didn't even know back then. I was like, wow, these are, you know, these are uh, Filipino artists and they work for Marvel and things like that. So it's it's pretty cool. Um, um, artist and Adobo. I love both of those things. <laughs> That's, I just took that right now, like oh, two minutes my. ago. <laughs> It'll be over. I'm only three hours away. Stay there. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, Ken's in Vegas. And Ken. I'm in LA. Yeah. Oh, okay. There yeah, you go. Jim's in LA. Uh, Jim Luhan, Jim Luhan Animation, Ken, I don't know if you're familiar with it. Mm -hmm. um, he makes all these crazy short films. Yep, uh, I saw some of them on uh, on YouTube. So. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, now, Jim, Ken, is he, he runs his own personal sweatshop. I mean, he works himself <laughs> like 26 hours a day. <laughs> I don't know how you put out these books. Shoot. I'm I'm my, trying to get my kid to help me out here. <laughs> yeah, really? yeah, he's got. He puts his, and then he puts his kids to work for. Him. Yeah, <laughs> no. do the coloring for me. You know, it's yeah. like <laughs> I'll finish it up. <laughs> yeah, and like, like I was just talking to him the other day, and he's put out like three or four graphic novels since I spoke to him. You know, he he puts one out a day, like a whole novel. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the amount of work that you put out is just incredible. What's in that adobo? Come on, tell yeah. me. <laughs> There's a secret. Yeah. Yeah, that's, um, that's, I need some of that, whatever that is. So <laughs> you got you got uh, this uh, Stumps uh, book yeah, coming out. Yeah, the Stumps of Flat Top Hill. <laughs> Actually, this uh, this past year, I almost I feel like I haven't done as much as uh, I could be doing, but it's because um, it's not it's not out in the public. It's just kind of behind the scenes. So the Stumps actually has been in the works for, I don't know, like two years, maybe even more. It's been finished. It's just been sitting there yeah. um, for that long. And um, I submitted it to uh, my agent, and she's like, all right, let's try to you know uh, pitch it to different uh, publishing houses. So I, it's kind of just been sitting there, and we've been waiting for all this time. And uh, a few months back, she finally got back to me. Um, you know, we have somebody, and it's uh, One Piece uh, Publishing that picked oh, it up. So, cool. yeah. And I um, I started working with uh, the editor over there and tr actually turn it into a finished book. But it was actually – a lot of it is already done, so they didn't have to do a lot of work on it. Oh, I see. So, yeah. So that's, you know, that's a big plus. And, you know, they really like the – the way I laid it out and the, the, the words in there and how I structured everything. So yeah, it was it kind of worked out well. Yeah, you're a real master of like the so. what, like what you're talking about pacing and and just uh, setting up the. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm still learning. There's there's a yeah. lot to learn. I, you know, like <laughs> it's just uh, trial and error. I think is is what it is, and you know you just got to keep going. That's kind of been my motto. <laughs> so. I, I have, if something doesn't work, you just got to work on the next one. Yeah. I have uh, your Tales of Toluca, but it's not here in my studio because it's my daughter's favorite book. Oh, she wow. loves that book. So, <laughs> Ken, how many, awesome. how many books would you say you have out? Um, I have The Tall Tales of Talbot Toluca that's out. I did a, um, a collaboration with... A bunch of artists on a comic book here in town. So that's one. It's um, the the uh, the Tales of Las Vegas uh, comic. We did that for kind of like a, the Vegas Valley Comic Book Festival here in town. So they do a yearly um, uh, comic festival, and they kind of did this comic for that festival. Are you so are you are you at all near the Silverado Casino? That's south. South, South of me. Oh, South Point. I'm sorry, South Point. Are you near the South Point casino? No, I'm I'm North Las Vegas, so that's maybe like 40 minutes away from oh, me. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So, that's where my it's... family lives, right near the South Point. Oh, okay. They yeah. live under a, under a freeway overpass right there. <laughs> <laughs> I have a yeah, brother that lives in Las Vegas, but I don't... So you're North Vegas. Are you by Old Vegas? Um, This is a little bit farther than that, yeah. Oh, so okay. we used to live closer to the downtown and then we moved um, more north of Vegas so yeah it's kind of uh, a ways away from everything else 
And are your are your books sponsored by Zappos? <laughs> <laughs> no, not this one. Maybe I need to get a hold of those guys. <laughs> there you go. That's hey, a good Jim, idea. Check this out. So I met Ken probably what has been, you know, three or four years ago. On, you know, I don't know. Somewhere online. It was online, yeah. I yeah. I don't know if I think I reached out to you. Yeah. I don't, I don't know Something. if that because I because I got your book or it was through the forum. Remember, yeah. I think it was on LinkedIn, and it was one of the uh, comic book forums that okay. they've got there. Okay. Yeah, and then we got a hold there somehow. We were I was right. posting there. Yeah. So I've known Ken for a while. Ken introduced me to Greg Wright, who lives in Michigan, mm -hmm. <laughs> and they <laughs> they have the mission, and he's part of Michigan Comics Collective. And I just interviewed Sean Seal, and then there's a bunch of great. Comic yeah, book, uh, a comic book group up here, but Jim is a big fan of Michigan for some reason. Yeah, I don't know why. Madonna, <laughs> because Madonna's from there. She's hot. <laughs> and Jim uh, hangs out with Madonna and their pals. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Anyway, it was kind of weird. You know? I think there's a lot of uh, creative talent on that side. I don't know if it's the cold. Everybody just stays inside and come cooks up some cool stuff, you know? That could be part of it. That could be part of it. Um, I, and I just spoke to Brian Bird, who lives in Oklahoma. He was on the show a couple of uh, weeks ago. And he is. He's, he said that Michigan is kind of like um, Seattle was back in the 90s. Mm -hmm. To mute, you know, back in the '90s when uh, the grunge scene was in Seattle. Oh, yeah, yeah. He says Michigan is like Seattle right now for comics. Oh, you know? wow. yeah. He said there, there, there's a, this is like this hotbed of you know creativity going on in Michigan right now. All, all paint is the Kurt Cobain of. Yeah. Let's just hope it ends up a little bit on, on the right. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. I, I'm just trying to, I'm thinking about, like, uh, what's his wife name? Wife's. Courtney Love. Yeah. Yeah. My, my wife is not Courtney Love. So, thank oh. God. Thank goodness. But, uh, yeah. So, anyway. Um, so, you should be on that, uh, writing that coattail. Yeah. Yeah. For that scene, yeah. Me? Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm... I'm. Are you working on the third one? <laughs> no, man, I've been going crazy with these, uh, this animation. Okay. I, I, That's taking up your time, yeah. You yeah I, haven't even, I haven't even thought about, like, how to do a third one. I mean, the thing about it was, is my goal was do three graphic novels and get to the point where then I could do like you, Ken, you know, start pitching it to um, publishers or something because I thought if I do three graphic mm -hmm. novels then I'll be kind of good at it. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I did two and was like, that was hard. It was too much work. I can't do a third. Yeah. So, you need, and, maybe you need to cut down your pages in half. <laughs> oh, yeah. The amount of pages. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, you're I mean, making a Lord, Lord of the Rings type uh, yeah, book size, right? Okay. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Well, I you know I have I have that thing I like I made a twenty minute you know movie mm -hmm. and then then I saw Bill Plimpton say don't make like a fifteen twenty minute movie <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> make something like two three five minutes you know yeah but um, so anyway I after my second book finished I saw Jim Luhan's Counterclockwise in Foreverland. And got completely derailed from my graphic novels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. I just need. It's to your be, fault. <laughs> I need more time, just Ken. You know, I right. need to work like you do. You know, twenty. Yeah. Twenty. Time and time and energy. Yeah. I, I, I think I really do. I was talking with my friend. His name is Kevin Cross. Another great artist. You got to have on your show. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, I was talking with him today. And we both agreed on this. I really have come to the conclusion where it's just work on whatever you believe in at the moment. Whatever whatever you feel like working on, whatever mm -hmm. your excitement is coming from, work on that and then worry about if there's a market or not. Because I drive myself crazy. I 
from day one of doing cartoons, I thought, should I do short cartoons or should I do long cartoons? And I would always ask my friends, what do you like better? Am I doing it like a, if I do it like an hour cartoon or, or a two minute cartoon? And they say, they'd always give me the same thing. Well, just do whatever you feel like. And I'd be like, no, that doesn't help. Tell me what you feel like. You know? And then I realized at the end of, after, you know, 60, 70 years of debating that in my head, I realized whatever, it's going to come out the best when you believe in it the most. So just do that and worry about it later. Worry about it there if anybody cares later, you know, because then at least you'll be happy. That's what I did with Foreverland. Foreverland, I didn't set out to like, well, I have to do a long movie. I just, I felt like the story of Foreverland, yeah. with clockwise and stuff, they felt the same way. Right. Um, we felt that it was just, it is what it is, you know, mm -hmm. however long it was, it was. So. Oh, what do you think, Ken? Is that what you that's, do? That's a spot on, um, you know, suggestion there to do. I mean, that's that's kind of how I work, pretty much. Is I don't come on, down, there's, Jules. There's Sorry. so many. I've been I've been working on comics. I've been working on, um, you know, regular books, picture books for kids, um, things like that. So when you start, if you talk to other Man. people, there there is start to tell you, okay, maybe you need to work on a certain age group for picture books. Yeah. You know, you start to target certain demographics and things like that. There's so many different variations. But when you start to kind of putting walls around you and try to, you know, concentrate and focus on so many different things, then you lose that fire. So you got you to gotta strike when it's hot and start working on, on what your love is at that moment. Yeah. yeah. So, and, you know, like that, so far it's worked for me. So um, it's just it's been it's been pretty cool. Thinking about how I've only been doing this for you know three plus years, um, working on books and things like that, and how and there's not really even such a big community. I mean, you guys are lucky. You talk to artists every day. I go home and I'm like in my hole here and have to you know like take care of three kids and go back to work the next day, take them to school and things like that. So um, just kind of been isolated for the most part. Um, but yeah, like my my only communication is with you guys, <laughs> and sometimes I'll. <laughs> You know, chat online. Even then, maybe I'm just getting old. I was like, I don't want to deal with the internet. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You've gone on like hiatus. Sometimes yeah. I'm like, I miss Ken. Yeah. I think for the most part, I just gotta, and that's what I keep telling myself is, it doesn't matter if I keep talking about it. If I have nothing to show at the end of it, there's nothing. You know, so I gotta just keep working, and then the, all the other stuff, recognition, you know, like things like that, that'll come in later at the end. You know, if, if if my work connects with other people, then it'll be, all be worth it. But either way, I told I told Paul this. You know, either way, if I get the recognition or if somebody sees my work, I'm kind of just doing this because I enjoy doing it. It's you know, yeah. it's a way for me to escape out from the outside world, good, dealing with but, work and things like that. So, but that's yeah. when uh, hey little man, um, that's when people uh, get. That's when they connect to it, though. Is when yeah, it's, it's authentic. When, it's it genuine. Happens. Good, good things happen because um, people can s smell desperation from miles away. You know, when you're doing something to make money or you're doing something, I have to do this to get an audience, you know, yeah. they can tell. But when you're doing something and you just, I don't care, you're just doing it, that seems like to be the good time when, you know, good stuff happens. <laughs> <laughs> you just brought him a $1,000. <laughs> we got to go to sale. <laughs> it's a note like... This is very important. Very important. Oh, I just brought back my phone. Go I just behind. finished using it. It's probably a 10% battery charge now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's no longer, you know. <laughs> yeah, you need uh, to plug it in. <laughs> fill the car up with gas, you know. Now you, just, you know, don't bring me my phone with no <laughs> nothing left okay. on the battery. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, I, uh, I've got like like five things I'm working on right now. I'm completely dis completely distracted. Um, so maybe I need to figure out what it is I want to 